Hello there, my fellow Dawi Czar, and welcome to, surprisingly, another episode about the Chaos Dwarves. This video has come in the wake of a very positive response to my original introductory episode, but also because I myself have found the Chaos Dwarves to be a very interesting faction, and definitely worthy of more coverage. So today, I will continue with that coverage, and talk some more about their society and practices of slavery. I am your host, for today, the Zarna Grund narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the Dawi Zar, shall we? The Chaos Dwarves have no equivalent to a High King, nor any form of a central figurehead. Instead, the delegations and runnings of their Dark Empire is usually run by a cadre of the High Priests of Hashut. These sorcerers rule over the Tower of Zarna Grund as the lords and masters of the Chaos Dwarves. Their lore is deep and ancient, the study of machines and magic combined to produce arcane engines of power and destruction. It was the Chaos Dwarf sorcerers who constructed a city in a past age, who carved its shape from obsidian and raised its dark towers and fashioned its massive gateways. They are few in number, probably no more than a few hundred among the whole Chaos Dwarf race. In the Temple of Hashut, the Chaos Dwarf sorcerers meet in a great conclave of evil to make their plans of domination. There is no leader nor normal hierarchy among them, but the strongest voice usually belongs to the oldest and most powerful. Every Chaos Dwarf sorcerer controls a part of the city, with its workshops and forges, slaves and warriors, as part of a personal domain. The dominion of the Chaos Dwarves has come to encompass the fire-scorched volcanic plain of Zarduk, at the heart of which Zarnagrund lies and, like a black iceberg, its real extent lies not above with its armored ziggurats and firelands temples, but below the surface in countless miles of magma-lit delvings, cavernous chambers, and vaulted mines. For many miles around it, the plain of Zar has succumbed to the hands of the Chaos Dwarves. It is littered with the scars of vast open mines, fiery rivers of magma, ash dunes and stagnant pools of foaming yellow and blood red. Beyond their heartland in the plain of Zar, they have raised great fortress citadels and towers to establish their dominion throughout the far-flung and perilous dark lands. However, no force, even one as brutal as the Chaos Dwarves, can lay claim to true sovereignty over this vast realm of a cursed, monster-infested shifting desert. At the edges of the Darklands, the outposts and black iron watchtowers of the Chaos Dwarves extend as far as the great desolation of Asgor, and the coastline of the Sea of Dread to the south, and the High Pass to the north. The Chaos Dwarf civilization has grown apart from the influence and developments of the Old World, and has acquired a distinctive character all of its own. The Chaos Dwarves wear armor made of metal scales bound together with flexible wire, that makes a strong but pliable defense. This armor is usually painted red. They wear extremely tall helmets that are as much a symbol of status as they are for protection. Depending upon his expertise, a Chaos Dwarf's helmet can be a distinctive shape, or may be decorated in a specific way. The most important Chaos Dwarves wear especially large and elaborate helmets. All Dwarves have thick beards, and Chaos Dwarves curl their own beards in exotic styles. This makes them look even more ferocious, and draws attention to their long, snaggly tusks. Chaos Dwarves are master craftsmen, and their armories produce an endless stream of armor and weapons dark devices, and works of demon-fueled occult engineering. Much of this war gear, the lesser products of their craft, is traded northwards to the warring Chaos Touch tribes, and eastward to the Ogre Kingdoms in return for slaves. 
By this trade, the blood is spilled across the world by their weapons. And in doing so, the Chaos Dwarves both enrich themselves and sow destruction in the name of Hashut. Moreover, they spread their insidious influence even further, gather intelligence in regards to their enemies, and so bring their dreams of dominion closer, one drop of blood at a time. Chaos Dwarf warriors are themselves equipped to the highest standard, and every sorcerer lord outfits their soldiers to their own design and in their own distinctive livery. The majority of their troops are armed with masterfully crafted axes, vicious stabbing blades, and barbed war picks. The most potent of them wear the so-called Black Shard Armor, which is forged with hellfire and blood, stronger than steel and phenomenally resistant to the effects of fire and heat. A significant number of their forces are armed with guns, from intricate wheel lock pistols to the bratty bladed fireglaive repeating guns. But the Hailshot Blunderbuss, a powerful short range weapon, is the most common and iconic. This last weapon was developed to combat the near limitless orc and goblin hordes that abound in the lands around the Chaos Dwarf domains and has become the terror of the greenskins in battle. Even though their numbers have shown a slow but steady increase down the long centuries in which they have carved their empire from the Darklands, the Chaos Dwarves are still relatively few. Even worse, they are far outnumbered in their realm by those over whom they claim dominion by virtue of might and cruelty, their innumerable slaves. The Chaos Dwarves consider all life other than that of their own kind to have value only as a raw resource or fitting sacrifice. Without slaves, Zarna Grund would have never been built, and its vast industries could not be maintained. Even now, the need for fresh blood and labor only increases every passing year, and their desolate empire always hungers for more. If the Chaos Dwarves' grand and sepulchral plans bow to any pressure for speed in their execution, it is this need for fresh slaves that is the cause. Should the levels of their livestock falter through disaster or overuse, and are required at the commissioning of a grand new design, the Chaos Dwarf Warhost is gathered then a suitable target selected for the spoil, while simultaneously iron-masked emissaries go out to the tribes of dark-hearted men, ogres, and even orc tribes to barter weapons for lives. This in turn can trigger fresh assaults and ravages far beyond the Darklands to feed the Chaos Dwarf's tally, and captives taken in distant lands can eventually find their end drudging in the slave pits of Zarduk. Unfortunate wretches of many races toil among the poisoned air and burning ash of Zarduk, and like the craftsmen they are, the Chaos Dwarves prefer, when possible, to select the right tool for the right job. Mutilated elves flayed and bled to provide alchemical unguents to fettered and broken Chaos Beasts from the northern wastes, harnessed for their immense endurance and tolerance for injury. But by far the most common slaves of the Chaos Dwarves are the Orcs and the Goblins, and this is not simply because they are native to the Darklands and its neighboring mountains. It is also because they are very hardy creatures, and will often last the longest in the noxious fumes and murderous conditions under which they must labor. Of these, the Hobgoblins have a unique and favored place as much as a slave might be favored by such cruel and callous masters. Perhaps the most distrusted, vicious, and above all treacherous of goblin kind, the Chaos Dwarves seldom reduce the hobgoblins to base toil, but rather employ them as slave overseers, lackeys, and even as forces providing utterly disposable reinforcements for their own forces, enabling a larger enemy army to be weakened without cost in dwarven lives. Hated by the other greenskins, who would happily murder them if they could, the hobgoblins of the Darklands have come to rely on the Chaos Dwarves for patronage and protection. 
While they are so treacherously eager to betray each other for advancement, they are quite incapable of fomenting any cohesive rebellion against their brutal masters, as they can never trust even each other. Humans too have their place among the slaves of the Chaos Dwarves, as they are adaptable and quick-witted, if less durable than the Greenskins and considerably more unpredictable. As do ogres, who are valued for their raw power, but always present a danger, as their primitive, violent spirits can never be fully broken. Skaven, on the other hand, are never taken alive, unless to be worked almost immediately to death, or used as paltry mass sacrifice. This is because they are considered simply too devious. The Chaos Dwarves have learned from bitter experience that any group taken might well conceal untold spies, saboteurs, and even deliberately infected plague carriers placed among their midst. But of all the races to fall into the hands of the masters of Zarna Grund, the darkest fate awaits those of their kin, the Dwarves of the West. The fruits of the bitter malice of long, brooding millennia are reserved exclusively for the Dwarves. And of all the sacrifices made to Hashut, none are more favored than those loyal to the treacherous ancestor gods which had abandoned them. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Chaos Dwarves for today. There's still a few things to be said about them, mainly about their armies and units, and if this video gets at least as good a reception as the other one, I will talk about those things next. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you a great day. May the dark blessings of Hashut be upon you.